So here I just want to show briefly then, well, we've got a website. Uh, if we go back and ask the questions about the, the marketing document and the company profile, and one of the questions is, what are you trying to do with your presence online? Well, we're trying to get more clients. We're trying to do web marketing or social media or web design, e-commerce, whatever. We're trying to do that for more people. So we're using the website in terms of, for example, showing our services, our portfolio, what we're about. And then there's the request to quote and such. Contact us. Well, maybe if that doesn't convince you, you go look at the blog and you read the blog and we're giving away free stuff here. We're giving away free advice on blogging. But after you read all three parts, you may think, well, this is nice, but I don't have the time for it. Maybe I'll hire them to do it. They seem to know how to do it. Maybe you need to build an app. Uh, maybe your app. Maybe your company needs an app. And here's how to do it in five minutes, which is always facetious. This, this, this stuff takes hours. But this is just to show you, you can, here are the tools. Here's how you set yourself up to create an app, to actually create the app. You need the idea, the programming experience, all of that. Guess what? There's a company that might be able to do it for you. So by reading the blog and maybe seeing what this company is about, you might decide, oh, well, at least let me share that. Let me put it on Twitter. Let me share it and have other people know about it. Maybe subscribe to keep up to date with this stuff. And then maybe ultimately request a quote. Maybe I do want to hire someone that can actually do it. So that's the purpose of this particular website. Think about what your website's about. And then we're on all of these other social networks to also, also try to reach an audience. Is it your consulting um, Yes. All right. Um, I'm just trying to add myself to your mailing list, but it's so error. Oops, okay. I, I need to check on that. What's wrong with it? Thank you for that. Maybe you're all crashing my site, yes. Oh, okay. A second question here? Is this your consulting? Yes. So here's where you can see our portfolio. And it's this is always the case. You know, the uh, what is the expression? Uh, the cobbler's uh, kids have no shoes in that, okay, we're busy doing this stuff. I'm not the only person in this company, but we're busy doing this stuff that maybe we need to update our website. But enough of it is there, hopefully, to give an impression. We try to update the blog at least a month. But the latest portfolio stuff is not there, unfortunately. And that's one of the to-do lists. But we're busy doing it that sometimes we don't get to it. And that's a good problem to have, isn't it? That once you're selling so many shoes, well, your kids don't have any, but you're selling shoes. So I just wanted to show this because we, we practice what we preach. What I do in this class, we do it for real clients. You can look them up on the portfolio. If you take the blogging class, uh, what I talk about in the blogging class is found here. We're on social media. So these are just a few of them here, but you can go follow us on other networks and we practice what we preach. Yes? Is this is a WordPress site? This is WordPress. Mm -hmm. So the thing is that oftentimes WordPress, they've got, I, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, WordPress has about 20% market share globally. And you might think 20%, that's pretty low. But that's 20% of hundreds of millions of websites throughout the world. And so it's one of the biggest platforms out there, most famous. It's always updating and improving. And uh, WordPress is very SEO friendly, as we will see a little bit later. That's why when I teach this class and most classes, people come in with a variety of kinds of websites. A WordPress site, a Wix site, a Weebly site, Squarespace, Dreamweaver front page, on and on and on. Joomla, Drupal, many ways to make a website. The concepts that I teach here should apply to every kind of website. But I can really only talk about and say, do this on a WordPress site, because I can't teach every platform. I don't know every platform. Question. What's the top platform? WordPress. It's got about 20% market share, and um, besides that, uh, then things really fragment after that because there's just so many entrants into this. But uh, any of the big name brands, WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, Weebly, Dreamweaver, all of them are, are good. And then there's even smaller ones that might fulfill a particular niche. Business Catalyst, I think, is a very good uh, website building tool, but it's very powerful for most people. It's got integrated a whole CRM, which is a customer 
relation management system. It keeps track of your customers. You can send out powerful emails, and it's got a powerful shopping cart feature and all of that advanced stuff. And I haven't seen the prices of Business Catalyst recently. Someone told me it's much more affordable now. When I last used Business Catalyst for a customer, it was, it was $999 to use that software. WordPress is free. Now you still need to buy your domain and your hosting, but that's not $900. Business Catalyst has really gotten more affordable. I don't know at the moment how much it is, but it's very powerful. I like it. But just not a lot of call for using it for real clients. WordPress is usually the website we, we make for clients. So what I'm going to do is on our handout, now we'll get back to page one of it. Nowadays it's harder to be found by potential clients. There is just so much competition. The best ad advice to rank, however, comes straight from the search engines themselves. So the search engines will give us um, the best advice do's and don'ts to get found. But they will not give away all their trade secrets of exactly how it works. Um, we'll be able to look at the webmaster tools, Google and Bing, and they will tell you do this and do that, but don't do this. And not only are we going to get the manual of how the search engines, these two search engines work, we're also going to get the tools to track conversions. We're going to track what is our traffic this month, this week, this hour. Where did our traffic come from? Twitter, that email newsletter. Are there any problems with my website? Are there broken links? What are the links from other people's websites? That all comes for free from Google and Bing. How many of you before this class have heard of Google Analytics? Raise your hand. We're going to talk about that in detail. How many of you before this class have heard of Google Webmaster Tools? Okay, how many of you know that now it's, now it's called Google Search Console? It's not called Webmaster Tools anymore. It's, it's Google Search Console. How many of you have heard of Google Webmaster Tools before this class? Very few people. How many of you have used Google Webmaster or Bing Webmaster Tools before this class? very few people. Okay, so uh, we're gonna set this up. We're, if you've already got this stuff set up, just hang on a moment while the rest of us set it up. If you've set it up before, confirm that you set it up the best way, which is what I'm gonna show you. And what we're gonna do actually is first set up the Bing Webmaster Tools because whatever you learn on one applies to the other pretty much the same. And so you probably have used or set up web, Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, but we'll see how, it, how it's a little different for Bing. And we should still target Bing. Google has 60% market share. Bing has about 20% market share. If we target both of them, we're reaching at least 80% of global traffic. The rest is divided among AltaVista and AOL and whatever other search engines. So we're going to talk about Bing and Google. So in the second point right here, Webmaster Guidelines. Bing, a rival search engine and one that is rising, has its own advice to help webmasters rank well on their results page. You'll find that many of the concepts apply to both search engines with minor variations. So if you, if you click on that link, click on that link and um, you should click Allow. Click on that Bing link and it should take you to the Webmaster Tools Help Center. And there's going to be plenty of books out there that you can find on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble or, or wherever about how to do SEO. But the thing about books, the thing about print, is that it gets outdated pretty quickly because the search engines uh, update their algorithm all the time. I believe there's an official timetable for Google at least. I believe it's every three or six months, but they've changed it. I think it's even sooner than that now. So the point of getting a book quickly falls out of favor. A better thing might be go directly to the search engines and they will give you the latest information. So if you follow that link, we've got here Bing Webmaster Tools Help and How To Center. Getting started dig into the data. So we're going to set this up and we're going to see this and try to understand it, but it's all right here. 
how to configure my site using the reports. What about if you've gotten malware and spam on your site, frequently asked questions, getting help? Why do I need why do I get notifications? Why is my site not in the index? Meaning why is Bing not finding it? Where can I submit feedback? So we're not going to go through this screen by screen. You should look at this. You should uh, you know if you've got a, a phone or a tablet, you should uh, get it and uh, pull it up and then curl up by the fireplace with a nice glass of wine and read this stuff here and uh, you'll be better informed than your competition which most likely they're not doing it what we're going to talk about in this class is a th synthesis of as many of these things as possible not word for word because it uh, it's a lot of words but you should look at it together and we will set it up we will see how it works uh, and why it's effective because how do we know our tweets are working how do we know the payments that we're doing on Facebook are working? How do we know that our newsletter is working? Webmaster tools will tell us that. Where's our traffic coming from? How long did someone stay on our site? What was the most popular page? But we need, a, we need to set it up. And this is going to vary depending on your website. So what if this is just a tool for um, seeing how effective it is? Or what is it? Exactly. So what we need to do is create a free account and set it up. So my link at the bottom, bing.com slash toolbox. So on your web browser, let's go to bing.com slash toolbox. I guess technically the address is bing.com slash toolbox slash webmaster. But if you just memorize bing.com slash toolbox, that's where usually where I go to. And so what we're going to do here is create this free account. Even if you don't have your website, you can still create this account because then you'll be able to use it uh, when, you, when you get your website. And so here, the first thing we have is, okay, sign in or create an account. How many of you currently have a Hotmail email address? Okay, good. So we can use that to sign in. If you don't have a Hotmail, if you have Gmail, we can use that as well. So we can use any email address, Hotmail, Cox, uh, AT&T, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever. So this first screen here, it's also got some other resources that you might want to look at. This stuff is also on the other screen we looked at, but um, maybe more direct. And so here it says, if you haven't used Bing before, actually, sign up now and we will give you $100 credit for search advertising on Yahoo and Bing. Remember on the first day of class I mentioned that the easy way to get to rank highly on search engines is to pay for it. Well, if you set up with Bing, they will give you $100 to start off with. You can start using $100 to reach more traffic, to get more traffic, just for setting up. So that's nice, but let's click on sign in. Even if you don't have an account, click sign in. Sign in, and then it will ask you to sign in with your Hotmail account or your Outlook account, your Microsoft account. If you don't have one, don't have a Microsoft account, sign up. So we're going to take a moment, since it's going to vary for everyone, either sign in with your Hotmail or create an account. Let me give you like two minutes at the most. Let me finish my thought here. Uh, so either sign in with your existing account or create one, and then, uh, and then we'll go on. Call me over if you're having trouble. Just sign in. That's all we need to do. Then we'll do it together. Question? Yes. Well, um, I said, mine just signed in, I don't know where I had an account. Oh, okay, that's very good. Uh, I'll look over your shoulder one moment just to confirm that. Question? We're going to use Google and Bing, but we're going to use Bing first. Yes. Let's take a moment to log in, and if you need any help, call me over. I 
Well, it's going to be that also. If you're creating a brand new account, it might ask you a lot of information. Try to fill that in uh, as accurately as possible. You can make it up if you want. You can make up a brand new account with Darth Vader if you'd like. But I would recommend if, you're, if it's asking you to create a brand new account, fill it in legitimately. It might ask you for a phone number and such. And I wouldn't be worried about putting that in there. They're not going to call you like a telemarketer and try to sell you something. They're not like Yelp, but they're going to be on you all the time to pay. Um, from my years of using Bing and Google, adding my phone number and such, I've never been called by them to be harassed. Um, that's just a security feature because nowadays we've heard about so many times that accounts get hacked. That's because there was probably a weak password. So if you've got a good password, you've got your phone number uh, set up, let's say for some reason you do get hacked. If you've got that phone number, that's a way for you to help you retrieve your account because they might have broken into your account, but they don't have your phone number. And with your phone number, you could get your account back. Um, yes. Well, like I just said, if you fill it in as accurately as possible, it is useful because then it'll give you the best result. But you can make it up, and if, it, if there's any parts that are optional, you can skip them. So I'm going to sign in. You should sign in or sign up for an account. And your screen will probably look different than mine, but that's okay. I just want you to sign in and then I'll and then we'll talk about what we have here. Both of them are, but both of them are your own stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, then that might be a good one. Yeah, and there's no bad. <laughs>
Anyone else need a little help? We might be ready to proceed. Ready? Okay, so hopefully you managed to log in. If you if you didn't, just follow along for the moment. I'm logging in with an account that I've already created, <clears throat> so my screen might look a little bit different than yours. But if you created a brand new account, most likely you get put onto this screen that really doesn't have any information yet. But eventually when you set up your account, it's going to give you some general statistics about your account. And what I'm going to do is I will, uh, uh, a little bit later, show an example of one that does have activity and such. But right now, I, the first thing that it asks at the very top is, let's add a site. Do you see at the top my site? And it says, add a site. So here you want to put in the address of your website. So your main address the top level of your address, your .com, .net, whatever it is, and then you click the Add button. I then get a screen that says Add a site about my site. URL, which is your address required. The little asterisk means required, so there's my address. Then it says something about Add a site map. You're going to see these different uh, info boxes oftentimes, so it's a good idea to hover over them to get the explanation. If you already have it, have created and published a sitemap for your site, you can add it here. Note that you can always add a sitemap later. Well, it didn't explain what a sitemap was, it's just saying you can use a sitemap here. Let me tell you what a sitemap is. Uh, how many of you have ever been to a mall before? Raise your hand most people. How many of you have uh, been to a brand new mall and you want to find a location and you go to the mall directory? How many of you have ever gone to that mall directory kiosk thing? Okay, good. That, in essence, is a site map. That mall directory is giving you a list and a map of every store that's in the mall so that when I need to go to a particular one, I look it up, I know where to go. Websites have something similar, a site map. This is a list of all of the pages on your site. 
So if we submit a sitemap to Bing and Google, it will the search engines will better understand what's in your site. So when someone searches something specific, Google will say, Bing will say, oh, we have a website that has that, and maybe show you as a result. A sitemap, however, is not a document that you write yourself. This is not simply a Word document that you write, that you write with all of the letter with all of the pages on your site. No. A sitemap is a very technical document that no regular person creates themselves. I wouldn't do it myself. We would use uh, our own website software to do it. WordPress has a feature to let us create a sitemap. Joomla has a feature for that. Uh, Drupal, Wix, Squarespace, all of this software will create a sitemap for you, usually. And so if we had a sitemap, we would add the sitemap link right here. It's okay that we will not add it at the moment here because most of us don't even know if we have a sitemap. So let's not add anything here unless you're 100% sure you have a sitemap. None of us here are probably sure we have it. I said 100% sure. So if I had a sitemap address, I would add it here. I can add it later. But this is something we do want to do. It's in my, it's in my handout there, and you should make a note also. Uh, add a sitemap to your webmaster tools as soon as you can. That's some advice there, because then the search engines will understand what your site is about as completely as possible, and therefore show you on results pages when someone searches. The search engines, like Google and Bing, are going to be checking on your website once in a while. And therefore, there's going to be some traffic from their servers from their spiders, from their software, visiting your website on a regular basis. Um, if we don't want them checking our site at certain times, because that's when our site is most visited, we don't want the, uh, Bing to be checking on our website, let's say between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m., that might be slowing down my site. Now, I don't know at the moment what are the popular times of my site. I can't assume that people visit my site on the regular 9 to 5 work hours. Maybe it's very popular that people visit my site after hours, 5 to 11. I don't know that. So let's leave this on default, and as we use these webmaster tools, it will tell us these are the most popular hours. So you could, if you want to, then decrease the traffic from the search engines, therefore it doesn't use up your resources, and regular people can visit your site more comfortably. The info box here. To help Bing optimize its crawl behavior of your site, you can tell us when your site receives the most traffic by selecting here. We will generally try to crawl your pages less during the times that you have more visitors. You can always add or update this information later. So that's fine. I'm gonna click the Add button. I didn't really change anything here. Click Add. And then now this is the part where probably everyone will need individual help, and that's okay. On the second day of classes when I build this in. I've got three ways to verify my site. Because if someone were to ask me in the real world, where do you live? And I tell them, I live up on that mansion in La Jolla. They're not going to believe me until I take my key and unlock the front door and walk in. So we have to verify this website as well. Question? Um, I, you just need to. Do you have an ad? No. If there was something else below, it has the about me section. Yeah, about me files, uh, whole section. Section. You fill out the profile. Okay, you might have a section that has a bunch of information to fill in about you. Mm -hmm. Fill that in first, and then at the very bottom, I think then it'll say add. Say save. Save. So. so we don't have a website. Please don't do this. Uh, only up to this point, because then you don't have anything to attach to your website. So your screen might look a little bit different than mine. Good thing you pointed that out. Uh, you want to fill in that about information and then click save. When you get to this screen, this is how we verify. This is my website. Now, I don't really own victorvictorvictor.com. I'm just putting in a website. But 
think about this. What's to stop my competitor from claiming my website on their Bing Webmaster tools? Maybe if they set this all up, aren't they going to steal? Aren't they going to see my traffic? No, they're going to get stopped right here because then Bing and Google will ask you to verify. And these are three technical ways to do it. That's why I asked you to bring your password and we'll do the individual help. But let me tell you the three possible ways to verify. Option one, it's saying you can download this file and then upload it to your website. So if you have, let's say, FTP software like FileZilla or CyberDuck, or let's say you have cPanel on GoDaddy and you have the file manager, that's a way for you to upload a file to your website. This is saying, download our, our file, it's unique to your website, download it, and then upload it to your site. Once you've uploaded it, click at the bottom here, verify. You're only going to do one of these three. Let me talk about them in general again, and then we'll do it individually. So that's one possibility. Download this file and upload it to your site and verify. The other possibility is well, if you can log into your site to edit your site, this is another way. It says copy this line of code in the gray here, copy it, and then you're going to paste it into your site. It says in your code in the HTML file, you're going to paste that line, and that line is unique to your site. Once you've pasted it into your site and saved it on your site, you're going to come back to Bing and click Verify. The third option, I think, is the hardest one. I never do this one myself. This one is, okay, here's a way to do this. And if you've got GoDaddy, let's give you the instructions on how to do it with GoDaddy. If you've got uh, strato.de, here's how to do it. If you've got yahoo.com, here's how to do it. So this is the hardest one, because it's going to give you more instructions to do this. I never bother with option three. For a client, I do either one or two, depending on how they've got their, their, their website set up. So if all of this sounds like gibberish, that's why we're going to take a moment to help you individually, first come, first serve. So if you're able to do this today, I would recommend you do it because the search engines will start to keep track of your traffic from the moment you set them up. It's not, it probably won't give you traffic from a year ago if you didn't set this up until today. So you want to do either option one or two. We're going to take a moment now to get as many people set up as possible. So raise your hand, first come, first serve. <coughs> 